One of the reasons why I'm a huge advocate for e-bikes is because of their practicality. The average car trip in the US, according to this and many other articles, is just a handful of miles. And the simple fact is driving a smaller vehicle is much more economical for you and better for the environment when doing these around town trips. Now, many people think that electric cars are the ultimate solution here. And EVs are better than gas cars, both in terms of their fuel cost and maintenance cost. And here's the actual data backing that up. So this is showing the various costs between both a gas and electric vehicle. And it's pretty obvious that both the fuel and maintenance are significantly more advantageous for an electric drivetrain. Oh yeah, and on the environmental side, an EV isn't really that much better than a traditional gas car. And this is due to the massive batteries this class of vehicle demands and the whole mining and production process that is quite damaging to the environment. And just for context, the battery in the Tesla Model 3 weighs a thousand pounds and the battery on my e-bike is about 20 pounds, so a huge difference. In all fairness though, EVs do eventually make up for this deficit and become ultimately more green than gas cars. And that break even point is at the about 20,000 mile point. But anyway, you slice it, gas, electric, the majority of trips that we take are short in range, less than five miles, and a two-ton vehicle is just not going to be the best choice. Yet in the United States, the automobile is still by far the most popular mode of transportation for all needs. So this chart is showing the share of US commuters who use the following modes of transportation to commute to work and school. And it's not even close. A car is over 80% and everything else is below 10%. Now, the reason for this car dominance isn't because the automobile is the pinnacle of transportation. Rather, it's because the infrastructure. Here in the US, everything is designed around the car. It's not designed around public transportation, and it's certainly not designed around cycling. In fact, my local food store has around 100 parking spots for cars, and not a single spot to lock up my bike. Every time I go there, I have to lock my bike to a trash can. If you provide people with the infrastructure to use something other than a car, they will. And to back that up, here's a list of the top 10 countries ranked by public transit. Now, this isn't a metric solely for bike infrastructure, but usually places with better public transit invest in things like bike Bike lanes. Now compare that to this list. This shows the top 10 countries with most cyclists per capita. And this is an article on bike culture, Europe versus America. And essentially this article is pointing out a huge perception difference of the utility of biking in Europe versus America. So in Denmark, for example, 16% of all trips and 25% of trips less than three miles are made by bike. So biking is a legit mode of transportation. And unfortunately in the US, biking is viewed as a sport, a hobby, and not a legit way to get around. But a bit further down the article is the real juicy part. So when residents of Portland were asked, do they support cycling? A whopping 60% said that they are interested in it, but are concerned for safety and access to bike lanes. Okay, so even though cycling is by far the most efficient and environmentally friendly mode of transportation for the common shorter trips around town, the infrastructure forces many people to drive automobiles. And this is why I got super excited when I came across this. This is the Nimbus One EV. Yes, it does look unconventional at first glance, but there's actually a, a purpose behind this. So this product is trying to deliver the benefits of biking with the access to car infrastructure. The first thing you're probably gonna notice is the three wheel chassis. And the point of this is to reduce the size and weight of the vehicle. In fact, the entire thing weighs 727 pounds, which is less than the battery in the Tesla Model 3. Speaking of the battery, it is removable, just like an e-bike. And because the battery is bigger, they split it up into four separate units, and each one looks a lot like a Suron battery, and it slides right into place underneath the, the seat of the vehicle. I gotta say, I'm a huge fan of this approach. I think it is the best solution in this case, not only because it allows you to bring the batteries inside and charge them, but if you wanna buy new batteries in the future when these get old, it's very easy to swap them out. Speaking of the batteries, in the city, they give you a maximum range of 93 miles. So this can cover all local trips and even most commutes. It's also gonna give you a top speed of 50 miles per hour. So that allows the Nimbus to go essentially anywhere a full-size vehicle can go. And another complaint people have when it comes to not wanting to cycle is inclement weather. 
And here the Nimbus again solves this problem by having a fully enclosed cabin with climate control. At this point, I do wanna mention that the Nimbus 1 isn't the only vehicle in this class. You do have others to consider, but from my research, the Nimbus 1 is the most innovative, best overall package. Essentially every other version of this I've seen on the market has some kind of Achilles heel to it, whether it's a non-removable battery or a super slow top speed. The only caveat with the Nimbus 1 is that it's not for sale quite yet. The expected release date is late 2023, so we do have to wait and see if the company can indeed deliver on all of these promises. But if they can, I think the Nimbus 1 is satisfying a market niche like never before. It's much more environmentally friendly than a full-size EV. It can still take advantage of all the car infrastructure and it's affordable. The thing is projected to cost only $10,000 brand new and they're gonna give you an option to rent it for $200 a month. So I think it's pretty obvious. I am a big fan of the Nimbus One and when it comes out, I definitely want to at least rent it and see what it's all about. But let us know in the comments below what you think of this kind of vehicle and would you ever consider buying something like this. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one.